welcome everybody to golf levels for the 12 to 19 handicapper full swing. We're going to take after some different aspects of the full game today, including driver fitting, how to make sure that you have the very best driver in your hands to help you get the most out of your driving. We're also going to talk about club fitting to make sure that you have the right club in your hands. We're going to learn about how to make a club go fast to maximize your power, and we're going to learn when you're in trouble how to get out as well as learning some of the basics of that all-important win game. Now this particular handicap level is one of my favorites because though you're better than most golfers, you still have some room to improve your game, quite a bit in fact, just by a little bit more knowledge and perhaps putting in a little bit more time. Now of course, hopefully, now that time will be better spent as we have some really crystal clear things to work on. You'll find as you get better and better that it's tougher to knock off those extra shots. What we need to do though is to get the most out of our game, to take those high number holes off the card because it doesn't take too many games to realize that if you throw in a triple or a quad, there goes your score. So we're going to have a great time today learning about some of these factors and helping you to get to the next level. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get out to the golf course. Well, that was fun. You know, I'm looking forward to showing you some great shots today, especially some wind shots. As you can see, we have a little wind blowing today, but I'm really looking forward to showing you those. Before I go into the finer points, though, I always like to go into a little review to make sure you have a really good base understanding of what a normal swing is supposed to do, some of the good fundamentals that you're going to want to carry forward into your game, and then we can talk about how to work off of those points to go into the finer areas. So let's take a minute and go ahead and review, and then we'll come back and we're going to talk a little bit about how to make that club go really fast. You know, one of the things I like to do with players of all levels are to make sure they're crystal clear on exactly how the golf swing works. There's a ton of misconceptions out there that can really derail you on your road to getting better. So I want to make sure you're absolutely crystal clear. This is really the shape of the swing and it's what I want you to understand because it's going to be with us throughout all levels. We're going to imagine for a second that this ball is up in the air like a baseball. You can see now that a swing that would suit this ball would be very much around like this. I could basically just turn myself back and forth and the club would swing back to where the ball is without any sort of manipulation. This is going to be really important because if we have our swing out of whack, we're going to have to manipulate with our hands or our body motion to make that contact. So when I have the club in the right position, it'll come back right to where it's supposed to be. Now I want you to imagine for a second a big pane of glass resting here. We can call that a swing plane. So if you ever hear that term, that's what they're talking about, is that that's where the club is set to swing. So just imagine that big pane of glass resting right here. This club is now on plane with my ball that's up in the air. Also, if you were to look down from above on this motion, you would see a circle that's going around me. So it's not a straight line motion where I try to bring the club back straight, and it's not a straight line motion on the way through either. Even though I want the ball to go straight, I don't go straight, I go in a circle. Much like I would if I were to clap. If I clap hands, my hand tracks a circular path back and forth. It also opens and closes like a door. And that's what a golf club does also. So it seems like we need to try to keep the club straight to make the ball go straight. But again, it's much like, more like me clapping, where I go ahead and swing back and forth on that circle it's only square for just a moment on its way back around the corner. And that's exactly the way a golf swing works. It's a circle that goes around us. Now, of course, our ball's not up here, though. It's down on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and set the ball back on the ground, and I'm going to tilt that swing plane with it so it goes up in the air behind me, sort of like that. Now a club that's in this sort of position is in a good place to hit that ball. It's still a circle that goes around me, but that circle is now tilted. Here you can see it in super slow motion. This is me playing a five iron shot and you can already start to see the elements of that circle as the club goes around me. There goes the club up over my shoulder in the back swing and you can see again that the club does not swing straight back and straight through. You can see it crystal clear right there. The ball is taking off straight 
but the swing is not. Here's my friend Steve Pate, who's been a successful player on the tour for years, showing the same type of motion. This is exhibited in all good players as they come through the impact area, that the club is working on that circle around them. This is very important to understand because you will hear that the club is supposed to be swung straight. Well, again, high-speed photographic evidence shows that this is not true. That club has to track a circular fashion right on around us. And again, you can see it crystal clear here. The swing is a circle that goes around us. That's the way we're built, and that's the way you want to swing it. Knowing what you know now about the swing shape and the swing plane, do you think it's the same for all clubs? I don't know. Let's figure it out. If I stand these two clubs next to each other, a 7-iron and a driver, the first thing that jumps out is the length. And we have to remember that the ball is part of what determines where the swing plane is. So with the longer club, the ball gets farther from me. And when that happens, that's going to create a situation where I need to swing a little bit more around. So as the club gets longer, the swing shape actually goes around and, and a little bit flatter. Whenever you hear that term, upright or flat, they're talking about the swing plane. The closer it is to, to level to the ground is flat. The more up it is, the more upright it is. So with the ball getting farther from us, that swing plane is going to go more around. You can see it here with the driver swing plane on the left versus the 9-iron swing plane on the right. The flatter swing plane of the driver is crystal clear right there. For those of you more technically minded, that driver swing plane is about 12 degrees flatter. Now that number is not important. That'll vary between golfers, but I want you to be clear on the concept. Now this is always um, an important note because I hear this every day out on the lesson tee, and that is, I need help. I hit my irons great, but I can't hit my driver at all. Or, I drive the ball fine, but I can't hit an iron. Well, those are people who are usually swinging the same way for each club. They do fine with their iron swing, which relates to that ball a little closer. They try to swing their driver the same way, and it's too high. So that ball gets farther from us, the swing plane gets flatter. Now, there's an extra bonus with the driver, and that is that the ball is also up in the air. You could imagine if the ball were up in the air entirely, even if the club weren't longer, I would have to go ahead and swing flatter to get to it. So the driver has two elements needing you to swing around, longer and the ball's more up in the air. So it does change throughout the bag. Now luckily, I don't have to think about it too much. Why? Because of the length of the club. As I start to bend over to go ahead and make my stance, this club, because it's longer, hits the ground sooner. So it prevents me from bending over any more than that. If the club is short, I've got to keep going. So that puts me more in this situation. The club's going to swing more up and down. With the driver, it's farther from me, and so that sets me up to swing more around. Luckily, I don't have to think about it too much. Now, there's one thing I want you to understand, and that is no matter what you're working on, I want you to relate it to our discussion of the swing plane and how it works, because it'll keep you in the ballpark with your technique. A lot of times you'll hear information that may sound good and you want to try it, but you've got to relate it to, you know, is that club in the right place? You might hear that you want to take your hands as high as possible for power. Well, this is a great position, absolutely super as a matter of fact, if I want to hit my foot, but not so good for the golf ball. Or you might hear that you want to turn as big as possible also. Fantastic, great, if the ball's right up there. So you always want to relate whatever you're working on to that discussion of the swing shape. It's really, really important. Now, I also want to take a moment to really boil it down to a really simple concept, and this will really keep you in the ballpark. And that is, with each club in the bag, you can basically think about putting that club over your shoulder at the top of the backswing. We don't want to have it over our hat, not behind us either right over the shoulder is a good place to put that club during the backswing. That'll basically really boil it down to a really simple thought. All you're trying to do is to swing it up over your shoulder in the backstroke. That way you'll be in a decent position to come back consistently to where the ball is. Now sometimes the players you see on TV don't do this exactly. They might have it a little bit high or a little bit low. But you have to remember those players are eating their lunch on the practice tee every day. So as we're getting started, we might as well do it right up over the shoulder, and it'll set you up to come right back down to where the ball is. 
you know, many players, even some fine players, can benefit from a little more knowledge about how to make the club go. So, again, we're never dealing from a wrong premise that you're trying to deliberately do something wrong with your swing because you've heard that that's the way it's supposed to go. So I hope you really enjoyed that. <laughs>